Welcome to this video. <clears throat> this will be part two or episode two of the Chess Openings Uncovered series. And I've got a couple of requests for the Karo Khan. Um, so yeah, I'll do a video <clears throat> or maybe even two. I'm not quite sure how much I manage in one video about the Karo Khan. Um, it will be, um, as mentioned um, in the first video, kind of overview. I'm not uh, thinking about going into a huge detail here. This is not possible in the time, but I want to present an overview what kind of lines there are and maybe give some some hints where to look at uh, where to look at what lines to look at um, according to the position that might arise. So let's say you you're more of a tactical player or more of an attacking player, then I would say, okay, this or this line is maybe more suited to you, or this is a line that you can play without um, knowing too many concrete lines or whatever. So let's get going. The Karo Khan, <clears throat> one c6 about um, against one e4. The Karo Khan is one of the main replies against e4. In general, I'd like to um, I like to categorize. Um, the replies against 1e4 into, yeah, into three groups. And these are the main moves, which are just roughly, which are, oops, e5, c5, e6, and c6. So both e, e and c pawn moves are the, in my mind, the first tier defenses, stuff like d6 or g6 or knight f6 is um, yeah slightly less solid but still okay and uh, yeah stuff like a6 or b6 I don't know <laughs> or b6 let's say is simply second rate and should give white an advantage all right um, I forgot d5 as one of the second second uh, yeah second rate is too harsh a word so let's say not uh, among the most solid stuff, but still very much okay. Okay, so c6, one of the best moves, and um, of obviously it's something that you can always uh, recommend to black players. It's a very, very good, uh, very good opening. So let's go through the lines. Of course, black's idea is to play d5, get a foothold in the center, and white um, almost always plays now one d4. It's not mandatory though. There are alternatives. Just um, briefly, what else is there? There's c4, which um, might, after d5, transpose um, into the Panov attack, usually arising after 2 d4, d5, ed5, cd5, c4. We see this later. Or it could um, arise this position where White has damaged his own pawn structure, but will get a very nice open piece play. Um, this is um, a good playable line. You need to be aware, though, that black after c4 has ideas like this, which is very much not in one e4 position. Um, it can easily transpose into the king's Indian or old Indian or any other line. So you better have some idea about uh, these kind of openings if you play 2c4. Um, another important alternative is the two knights variation, an old favorite of Bobby Fischer's. It's still played today um, by Nigel Short. He sometimes um, applies this variation, and it's uh, it's quite interesting. Um, it's a good alternative. Um, Black's main reply here is um, Bishop G4, and very often White early on gets the bishop pair, but Black has. Um, very good solid structure, all pawns on white squares. The Karakan, of course, a white squared opening, and you um, you don't have the bishop anymore, so black is very solid. But white can, of course, play this position. It usually more of a strategic line, less tactical. Um, one idea about this is also if black takes here, that um, the line with bishop f5, which is the main line after d4. If, the, if you had this position with pawn on d4 and knight back on g1, so let's just show this quickly. This this position is the main line nowadays. 
with the knights, it's uh, slightly different. So the problem here is that h4, threatening h5, that you have this kind of stuff coming. And this is um, a bit bit ugly, <laughs> to say the least. Black must play uh, g6 now, I can put it on the board, very ugly. Queen f3, stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's a bit tricky. Bishop f5 is um, the move that you want to uh, want to see here. After knight e7, there is no not much difference besides that you are committed to um, the early knight um, development on f3. So it's it's a tricky line. If you um, if you want to get out of the main path early, then it's uh, it's it's an option to consider. Um, also, there's possible d3. The King's Indian attack style move. Um, of course, you cannot really uh, expect to play for an advantage with such a move. Cannot be the best move just by, by logical principles, but um, it's certainly uh, playable. I played this myself when I was, uh, yeah, a lot younger because I liked the King's Indian attack very much and uh, I had some pretty good results with this kind of setup. You, you just continue. Let's say um, black plays knight f6, not the best move probably, but the general idea is of course to to get this king's Indian attack position. And if you enjoy this um, kind of um, kind of setup, you can certainly uh, go for this. It's uh, nothing that uh, would uh, scare black much though, especially after knight e2, black can play even e5, and it's hard to imagine that uh, white should get anything too great against this. There are some funny ideas though, this kind of stuff. Um, like this, you get an isolated pawn position suddenly. All right, these are the very, very early deviations. Okay, but d4 is by far the main move and also the move I would, would recommend white players to, to play. d5, yeah, and now of course, um, yeah, black simply attacks the e4 pawn and you yeah, I don't have much. You have choices, but you need to take care about the e4 pawn. Either you advance it, play the advance Karakhan, which is um, nowadays uh, probably the main line of the opening. Um, the other alternative is to play one of the knight moves, which is often not much of a difference. So cover e4. Or there's uh, a tricky alternative f3, the fantasy variation. I'm not quite sure why it is called the fantasy variation. It covers e4. Then there is uh, the exchange, just exchanging, and now developing a piece like bishop d3 or c4, the pawn of attack, leading to very open um, positions. So let's uh, work from the rarer lines um, to the more common ones. Um, oops, d5, f3. It's a pretty rare line, the fantasy variation, but it has received some some uh, outings uh, in the last couple of years by by creative players. For for example, a Russian um, champion. I don't know. I think he won this in 2011. Jan Nepomniachtchi. Um, he plays this regularly with uh, lots of success. Then we have uh, Ivan Shuk played it uh, recently with success. It's interesting. It's a very tricky line, which um, has one very um, very good and interesting feature. This um, setup of pawns prevents Black's bishop to to develop, and this is one feature of the Karukan that this bishop very often can uh, can be used early. Simply to look at this. This bishop now immediately gets into play and f3 just prevent that. So black very often needs to readjust here. And uh, in fact, maybe the main line here is the move e6 where black immediately says, okay, I tried, but I don't get the bishop out. And um, this very often leads to interesting position where white gets to long castles quickly and then attacks on the king side while black plays on the queen side. Um, the fantasy variation is, is quite interesting. I don't think it has any 
huge um, huge problem theoretically for white it um, it's certainly not a refutation of the Karl Khan but if you are looking for a slightly offbeat solution to this opening and enjoy um, yeah active creative play then it's maybe the line for you um, you should be afraid to sacrifice pawns though because <laughs> this is one of the main lines where black instantly um, threatens queen to h4 and this leads to to pure gambit star play but you see that with the op open f file and the the play on f7 um yeah there's certainly a very good compensation for white it's very risky for black to play this way but still you need to be aware of that this is a sharp line i think the fantasy is a bit un underestimated but it gets some popularity um uh, last couple of uh, years so an interesting um, way to play um yeah look at let's look at this next the exchange with bishop d3 very often this is um played then and it's um quite solid so solid choice for white you've got um a good open development early bishop moves here so black um needs to do something about this c8 bishop it cannot go to to f5 but very often black um simply goes um along these lines and get this bishop out anyway in general this structure is um quite similar um to the card spot structure and the queen's gambit decline just with color colors reversed so we've got the c pawn exchanged for the e pawn it's very similar to the queen's gambit exchanged but here white in comparison to to the black side in the queen's gambit exchange has got both bishops on active positions in the corresponding line of the queen's gambit exchange black um only gets this bishop to to e7 and this bishop not out at all so um it's um quite good if you enjoy open positions but you shouldn't expect too much from this um black has already made plan with a minority attack b pawn push um amongst others and in general it, it shouldn't be too scary for black but if you want a simple position with clear ideas white very often sets up very very simply like this develop knight to e5 and then try to play on the king side so it's it's not bad at all but um, it's not the most aggressive way to play all right this is the exchange and now we got the pun of attack um yeah this is the choice for players who like to play with open piece play yeah everything's wide open here um and uh, don't mind to have an isolated pawn very often you get isolated pawns just for example position like this is fairly typical if black plays with an early e6 black has other choices but white um in almost all lines get isolated pawns um another main move is, is this here and it can lead to quite quite sharp uh, play like bishop g5 d takes c5 um d5 and so on it's very tactical and open so if you enjoy peace play and um like to um like to um you yeah, have a dynamic kind of flowing position with uh, with pieces coming out quickly then the pawn of is, uh, is a good choice it's also not so easy for black to play he needs to know at least one good line and he knows needs to know it really well to avoid trouble um theoretically speaking black should be okay i mean black is okay in the whole opening so no wonder <laughs> but um it's um it's not not so easy to play let's say in comparison to the pure exchange variation where black simply uh, needs to know one setup and is fine um yeah the pawn off is um, still a very good very good weapon that can be recommended um yeah for black um i think the most solid way to play this is um probably this line transposing to um yeah, very often transposing to a Karo Khan. Let's have a look at this. Uh, to a Karo Khan, <laughs> to a Nimzo Indian, of course, sorry, to the Nimzo Indian Karpov variation. 
it's quite fun to get from the <laughs> from the Panov to the uh, to the uh, to the Nimzo, but it happens here. Uh, bishop bishop b4 in this position is the most solid way for black to play, and it probably is very close to being uh, being equal. Um, the sharper option is knight c6, or but this is a bit risky g6. If you want to get some more enterprising players black, then you should go for g6 or knight c6. While knight c6 is probably theoretically the healthier move, uh, g6 is still still interesting. Yeah, this is what I would play as black probably. Knight c6, it's quite um, quite sharp. Can get quite sharp at least. Um, yeah, this is the pun off. And um, yeah, what else is there? There are the two knight moves. And of course the the advance variation. So um, yeah, maybe let's start with the knight moves. Yeah, why are there those two moves? I mean, what's the difference between knight c3 and uh, oops and uh, knight d2? Um, of course, if black takes, there is no difference. There is a slight difference if black decides not to take, which is possible, and um, mostly with the move g6. Um, here we we see a difference. In the setup with knight d2 g6, white actually has the possibility to play c3 and secure the center, continue with bishop d3 castles, and in the same position with knight c3 g6, um, this is not possible. You cannot play c3, and um, this simply leads to different positions. For example, if um, White now plays knight to f3, bishop g7, then h3 is uh, the main move, preventing bishop to g4. And then there are lines like this possible. Not that um, this is particularly great for black, but this is possible. And it's simply a different position than with knight d2 and bishop d3 early. Um, then this uh, early counterplay is simply not possible for black. So um, it's very often not a huge difference, but if you know that your opponent um, plays this kind of stuff, you need to consider which move you want to play and check which lines to allow and which lines uh, to avoid. Um, very often it's no difference as black takes anyway. Yeah, and here black has, um, of course, quite a choice. He can play... Um, the main move, bishop f5, knight d7, which is, uh, yeah, not far behind in terms of, um, yeah, popularity, at least over the whole span of the opening. It's been played quite a lot. Bishop f5 is, uh, is more often played though. And there's, uh, the interesting move, knight f6, which is very rarely played, but, um, it is interesting. Um, let's start with this move, often called the Bronstein Larsen variation. Um, knight f6, obviously in white's white to take, and he doesn't have any other move really Check. to take. And then black uh, has a choice of two recaptures. He can play e takes f6, which, um, yeah, to be honest, is not a uh, completely correct opening. I mean, it's playable, but uh, it's not uh, not too great as white enjoys a 4-3 to three majority and black has no bishop pair to compensate this. It's quite similar to the to the rule of pass exchange, just a, a mirror image. And this is simply, yeah, the the basis for, for lost pawn endgame in, uh, in the very distant future. It is not losing by force or anything, but simply a bit uncomfortable for black to play. Um, in general, if black plays knight f6, he wants to go here. And this is, in fact, a quite interesting position and an interesting line. It is um, a bit forgotten. Um, it's um, basically never played by any top players. Um see this very rarely. But it's um, very interesting. I mean, black has a very nice pawn uh, mass here in the center. And he uh, intends to get the bishop out here or here then play a6 and maybe play for long castles. Also got the g, oops, the g file here. So black is quite active. Of course, um, the structure is not not too great. It got pawn weaknesses. But it's um, a very interesting sharp line 
with some uh, really tricky variations. Um, this is probably the main move, c3. Um, and now black has uh, the funny idea, knight, uh, queen to d5. Looks very strange, but um, he wants to um, play against the g3 setup, which uh, knight f, uh, queen to d5 obviously uh, does. g3 is not possible. So uh, just, um, just a hint for black players. Um, have a look at this line. It's not so bad as it's sometimes, uh, yeah, believed to be. And it's an interesting uh, alternative to get a fighting position, especially if you, if you also play one of the solid lines, knight d7 or bishop f5. It's maybe interesting to have knight f6 as, uh, as an offbeat alternative to surprise white players. They often simply forgot what to play against this because it's so um, rarely played. Um, yeah, then, then knight d7, which is, um, has been Karpov's favorite move. Black's idea is to um, prepare knight f6. And here um, the main lines are bishop c4, or nowadays by far knight to g5. Knight to g5 is a funny move. It um, looks rather weird, but <laughs> one point is that the move e uh, h6 is in fact a huge mistake after knight e6. And, uh, well, this um, leads to checkmate even. Black cannot take, but so he needs to move the queen somewhere. And after this, white has won the bishop pair. And yeah, somehow this, this whole position looks a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit, um, yeah, out of rhythm for black. It's a bit strange. So h6 is not really good. Very often it continues like this. Still h6 is no good. And, um, it um it um often leads to this kind of this kind of position where black um later tries to play c5 or b6 bishop b7 c5 yeah i'm not 100% sure but i think um this should be bit somewhere between equal and a slight advantage to white it's certainly playable for black but it's not um so popular anymore um, did I get the move order right? Let's just the here. E6. No, it's this move first, not queen e2. Because after h6, you can take here. This is the famous, uh, deep blue against Kasparov sacrifice. Where Kasparov, for whatever reason, went for this completely lost line as black. Um, okay. The alternative here is bishop c4. Knight f6, knight g5, which is a bit similar, but um, this other kind of uh, line that I showed before is maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit um, more testing for black. Here, white is threatening on uh, f7, so black needs to invest a move here, and then we got something like this. A general feature here is that black didn't manage to get the bishop out. But instead, um, it sort of looks a bit like a French, but with slightly weird piece placement. All this is um, certainly playable for black, all ranging from, from a very slight advantage for white to equality. Okay, but the big move here by far is bishop f5. And I think it's very understandable that this move is the most popular simply because it solves this issue about of the bishop immediately getting it out. And now knight g3 is um, the main move. If you're looking for an uh, offbeat alternative, knight c5 is not too bad. It, um, yeah, funny enough, it takes this pawn. There are some, um, some tactical lines with e5 or knight d7. But um, this is playable. It has been played by some strong players in the last couple of years and might um, help to get um, a less um, explored position. Um, nothing to be afraid of for black, though. I mean, black is very fine in this opening. Knight g3, bishop g6. And now this is um, the, the main continuation nowadays. This kind of setup and um, in fact this whole line has been played um, since I don't know maybe the 50s or 60s 
Um, and it always uh, had the reputation of being uh, very slightly better for white. And uh, this is mostly in the setups where, um, let's uh, put it on the board, bishop here, f6, um, castles, queen c7, c4, long castles. Well, black castles long. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is the 100% correct move order, but um, if, if not, it's close. Um, the black castles long. And um, this always uh, had the reputation of being slightly passive for black. You get in c5 later, but all in all, you don't have much counterplay. Very often, white get um, got slightly better positions. You get uh, more room as white and sometimes have ideas on the king side later. Not in the middle game, but more in the end game where this pawn is a bit of a nuisance for black as it sort of hems the, the pawns here. Um, the whole, yeah, rin, rin, well, I cannot pronounce this word. Uh, the whole, uh, let's say, oops, I didn't want to do that. Oops, the whole revival of this line came uh, with the idea of um, actually not playing for um, long castle, but, but going for, for short castling. So this kind of setup. And then castling short. And this is nowadays the main line of the, the, yeah, the classical Karakhan with knight c3 or knight d2. Um, yeah, this is, um, in fact, a rather, it can get rather sharp because after short castles, White has this ready-made um, attack idea with g4, g5. Of course, this knight obstruct this, but this is the idea. And um, yeah, black will get counterplay with c5, probably rook c8, queen out, and so on. So it is um, it is rather sharp, but um, I think um, all in all, black is believed to be uh, pretty okay here. But if you play black, you need to play, be ready to, uh, to um, yeah, getting attacked really with g4, g5. I tried to play this opening um, a couple of, is it years ago? Or let's say one, one and a half, two years ago. And I um, I simply um, found out that for me, um, I don't know, I'm always getting nervous about this G4, G5 stuff. Um, it's probably okay. I mean, it is it is okay, certainly, but you really know um, need to know what you're doing. It's not the kind of line that you can just play and um, hope you're all right. It's, um, it's dangerous. Um, for white players, certainly you can look at this and try to work out um, a good kind of move order to get in this g4, g5 at once. It's uh, it's rather sharp. It's not uh, not a um, uh, I don't know boring whatever kind of maneuvering opening. This this can get really sharp. Um, but um, all in all, black should should be okay. Um, I mean the the main um, sign that black is okay in this line is. That nowadays, if you look at um, world class players, they the absolute top, yeah, they basically almost all of them play the advance, and this is uh, simply because the other lines are pretty much fine for black. Here, there's simply maybe a little bit more to find in terms of setting black problems. Um, what you need to be aware of if you want to play this as black, though, shouldn't forget this. That in this position, white isn't obliged to play this h4, h5, knight f3. He has other ideas. He can play stuff like this, or knight e2, or knight h3. And um, the idea is very often to put pressure on this bishop with a knight, and then follow up with h4, or maybe bishop c4, getting on uh, on f7 in some ways. Um, you need to um, know these lines. They are not uh, without um, a drop of poison. Um, if you don't don't know what you're doing there, you can get into trouble really quickly. So you need to know your stuff. Um, I think the the main point is nowadays that Black very quickly plays um, a quick bishop d6, so that um, you can get quickly on on this knight. Okay, but. Um, this, these are sidelines, but uh, you need to know them as black, certainly. And uh, they, they can be interesting for white. I mean, 
it's uh, very easy to forget those kind of sidelines if you're busy learning them the main lines um, okay so this is the classical I call the night move the classical I'm not quite sure if this is the right term okay and then there's the advanced variation which is um, as mentioned nowadays probably the main line black um, has two main moves here um, the absolute main line is bishop f5 but there's also the funny move c5 which is uh, yeah indeed funny black instantly tries to prepare knight to c6 but loses a whole tempo in the process with c5 the main point is um, or the main problem let's say here is um, that um, yeah it's some in some lines you simply um, yeah get this pawn taken and you don't get it back so quickly um, it's quite an ambitious line with c5 but it seems to be uh, playable um, there's in fact um, a German grandmaster or now German formerly I think Russian uh, Igor Schenkin who's playing this all the time I mean against all people um, even 2700 GMs um, and against preparation he's willing to play this all the time and uh, he's not uh, the kind of person who allows um, um, yeah, um, to, uh, to allow some a bad position to happen uh, knowingly. So um, he he needs to he knows what he's doing usually in the opening. So maybe this is an interesting way for Black to 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 get out of the the main um, the main path here because they are really complicated and there's a lot to learn. So an interesting try for for Black maybe. For White, I must say that I think. Um, Nowadays, um, there are these kind of ideas with very quick opening of the position. And I think maybe this is interesting to look at for white. Um, but if you're an ex, it's very much possible that if you're an expert on the Karokan, you already know that this is maybe not the best. I'm just um, telling you what I know that this at least was critical one or two years ago. Probably still is, but um, I'm not 100% sure. It's interesting. Um, okay, the main point here is uh, bishop f. Uh, oops, the main move here is um, bishop f5, of course. And um, after this, white has um, a really wide choice of moves. Um, basically, there there are two um, kind of um, two yeah two or three kind of plans here. There's um, the kind of crude plan <laughs> to attack this bishop. Um, this can happen with moves like g4 or knight c3 e6 g4 or it can happen with white starting h4 and black maybe replying h6 and then g4. So white can try in a very sharp manner to attack this bishop. Um, and these kind of moves are always interesting and sharp, but I don't think um, any of them are too dangerous. Um, or they're dangerous, but they're not um, an, a huge threat to, to black. Maybe you need to know what you're doing, though. Let's say this and g4, the Vanderveel variation. This had, has been really popular in the 90s and um, and after that. And I think nowadays it's it's, it's, uh, it's it's mostly considered okay for black. G4, bishop g6, and I think knight e2 was um, was the main. Um, the main move order here, but uh, I think nowadays I think c5 is um, is pretty okay for black. Um, this is um, for white players. It can be recommended to play this way if you really like super sharp ir and um, yeah, let's say uh, yeah irrational positions. I mean it's uh, a pure pure slug face sometimes, um, and black has many alternatives. He can also play stuff like this for example it's not a bad move or, or h5 sometimes mm, um, it's it's very sharp but um, you need to know as white that you're really burning your bridges and you need to know what you're doing if black knows uh, the stuff well and you don't know anything you will lose the game it's simple as that it's very sharp um, then there's the I think the instant g4 is uh, is not really dangerous I think it's uh, h4 is um, is the more more dangerous way to play this. Black can even very often just retreat to d7 and set up a French setup and ask you what 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 the hell are you doing with your pawn on g4, 
I don't think G4 instantly is this any dangerous. Um, H4 is an interesting move. Uh, this is actually a move I, I could recommend to white players. It's um, it's um, quite tricky at times, and so it's sharp, but it's not completely. Um, yeah, I mean, Knight C3 and G4, the vendor wheel is, is it's on the it's close to being a bit un unsolid. Yeah. <laughs> or unsound. Yeah? It's not not losing or anything, but you're really risking a lot, and this is not the case with h4. h4 tries to uh, put pressure on the bishop, just as the other moves do. So black, uh, as, G, as uh, knight c3 three does, but black here, e6 is not possible at all, as you simply will lose the bishop. It, it doesn't have any, any uh, squares. So black needs to react in a way, and very often he reacts with h5. If he goes h6, you can even play g4, bishop back, and then e6. This had been featured recently in a, in a game I presented on the channel between um, Anna Muzichuk and um, and Emil Sotowski in a fantastic tactical game um, played um, just uh, two months ago or so. Um, I, I'm, I can um, maybe put a note here in the video to, to link to this. A really great game in this line. Um, Black also, and in fact, more often plays h5, to which white plays c4, and then um, tries to attack the center with the c-pawn. And this leads to a very complicated battle, um, in um, which you, um, if you know a couple of li lines, I think you can play without knowing uh, too many concrete, uh, concrete things. It's quite interesting for white, and I think something to recommend. I think there are some players who often play h4. For example, Peter Swidler plays this move often. Yeah, h4 is an interesting way for white to go, and black probably should play h5. It's it's just more solid than h6, but h6 is probably playable as well. Um, okay, th these are the somewhat sharper options. And uh, then there's um, a whole group of lines. Um, which white uh, can play that are more of a um, strategical nature. They can get sharp as well, and, but um, this is knight f3, first and foremost, and uh, also the moves bishop e3, c3, or knight d2. In fact, all these moves might transpose um, <laughs> into the same position. It's uh, quite irritating at times. The most played one is knight f3. And this is uh, nowadays called the short variation, as Nigel Short really uh, popular, popularized this move, starting from the early 1990s. And uh, it was uh, quickly picked up by um, by uh, lots of top players. Um, with this move, white basically says, OK, you have your bishop out of the out of the pawn chain. But I don't mind. I just develop quickly, and uh, all this leads to a French yeah, where you lose a move with c6, c5, and you get your bishop out. But uh, big deal. I'll exchange it off very often with knight h4. Not at the moment. Yeah, the queen is covering the square. But often this bishop will get exchanged, and then I get the bishop pair. And uh, well, I don't mind that you get the bishop out of this. And quite often, and this is a very interesting feature. Um, the the bishop out of the pawn chain is not only an advantage but also a problem for black because um, I can I can show a, a line bishop e2 let's say black goes c5 and now bishop here and um, let's let's just consider this pawn is hanging and if black takes which is um, a playable move. Then you see that this knight attacks the bishop, and black needs to react to this. He cannot allow his pawn structure to be completely destroyed here. So knight e7. And uh, then white can very often open up the position with c4 and queen b3, stuff like this. And then you see that the queen side has been weakened by this um, bishop being out of the pawn chain. Also, white has quite considerable lead in development already. Um, so um, the short variation can get um, sharp quickly if white opens up the position with c4. Um, it's um, probably the main line of the 
Karakan nowadays and uh, certainly um, a line that uh, white players should investigate. Um, black players, obviously, as well, you get it very often. When I tried out the Karo Khan in, uh, in online blitz uh, on ICC and on other platforms, I got the advance all the time, much more um, than I got um, in the night moves or the pan off or whatever. Um, so um, black, of course, has a multitude of uh, possibilities. You can play these night moves first or C5 immediately is probably the main move. Um, yeah, then there are lines which are similar in nature. One is knight d2. I just want to show the idea. Here white quickly gets the knight to b3 and this way tries to make it harder for black to get, to get in c5. It can, if you look at this, here this kind of development is very similar to the short system, but here white um, yeah, doesn't uh, open up the position early. He wants to hinder black from playing his c5 break. And um, this is um, very much playable as well. Black here nowadays often goes for these kind of maneuvers. Pretty interesting. Um, in general, this, uh, these lines um, are very, very interesting from a strategical point of view. And if you are more inclined uh, to play a sort of slower game uh, where you don't uh, need to memorize um, those direct confrontational lines and this is a good good choice um in fact there's also this move which if you look at this might transpose it's just a bit different with the with the bishop um, out early um in fact if you want to play this opening as black I think it's really necessary to to look at games here and then study the kind of plans and the different move orders that um, that white comes up with um, as it can be sometimes very irritating and for white players um, I suggest that you, you that you study those move orders also and try to pick something where black has to be careful um, this early bishop e3 in fact has one one point that it allows um, an early f4 to to bolster the center here. This is of course a difference to an early knight f3. And um, yeah, as you as you already saw, there are a ton of variations after bishop f5. And this is also why I wanted to point out this move, as it might be a, a good alternative if you want to simply um, yeah save up on learning lines. Here you are the one to get in the surprise um, very often it is really a surprise to white players if they don't know know exactly what is happening. Um, if you get in the 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 novelty or the novelty is also, but you you're the one to to put the game into um, the the kind of waters that you know better probably than your opponent. And um, this is why this move is interesting. After bishop f5, there's really a ton of lines that you need to need to memorize. I'm pretty sure I even forgot one <laughs> because there's um, there's so much. Um, did I really forget one? I mean, there's really um, everything's playable in a way. Um, yeah, there's also the this old move, but this is really harmless. Black can exchange quickly. This exchange is, is always uh, very fine for black. Um, so for white players, you can, if you want to have a sharper, more unbalanced battle, maybe h4 is a good idea. And if you want to have, um, want to play it this way, you have those sharp ideas with c4, depending on, uh, on what uh, black is, uh, is playing now. It's really a difference. If he plays c5, then c4 is, um, is a good idea to open up the position and make use of the, the, the weakened queen side. If black plays, um, oops, if black plays um, a slow move, then very often it can transpose into this kind of setup and it's um, more of a maneuvering game. Um, yeah, the advance is uh, nowadays the main battleground in, in the Karukan simply because of, uh, yeah, the very solid reputation of the bishop f5 line after knight c3 or knight d2. But it's also um, very interesting from a strategical point of view for both sides to play. Um, I think black, um, yeah, could investigate as mentioned the c5 idea, 
here to get out of uh, this this really huge theory or you really need to bite the bullet and learn some stuff against all this it's it's very um it can be um, rather difficult to play this without any uh, concrete knowledge um, I, and <laughs> i managed to uh, lose quite a number of blitz games <laughs> in this opening as black against people who knew what they're doing and sometimes i was really not getting any kind of playable position it it's not looking so um this kind of stuff oops like the short variation it doesn't look so threatening at first but it it can be really really tough um if you want to um learn more about um this line i can refer you to games of sergey kayakin he's playing this really excellently with white in general a book recommendation for the karukan opening is um a very very good book by uh, Lars Schandorf. He wrote a book on the Karakan for Black. Yeah, this is a recommendation for Black. And um, um, he, in this book, recommended, um, yeah, to go Bishop F5 here, obviously with short castles. Basically, this is the modern Karakan. What he what he um, recommended in the book, Bishop F5. In the advance, he um, he went for bishop f5 main lines, and in the panov, so this uh, the big three, so to say. Oops, no, not the b6 is terrible. Played knight c6, also the most uh, dynamic choice. So he constructed a Karukan repertoire, which is more on the dynamic side, more on the dynamic than the, than the solid side. Um, I can post the link also in the description to uh, to this book. It's very much uh, the standard um, book now on the Karukan, for black at least, um, and very much recommended if you want to pick up this opening. Yeah, um, this was very much content um, in one video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with more of this openings uncovered. And uh, yeah, keep on posting suggestions, um, as you see I pick them up and really do something about the suggestions. Yeah, cheers and bye.